Hey everyone, and welcome to the next episode of the Planet Coaster Element series, where today we will be looking at the corkscrew. Uh, more specifically, we're going to be looking at B&M corkscrews for both the inver and sit down. So, looking at ways you can get the whip to them, the iconic shape of the uh, the flat spin inverted corkscrews, and overall making the entrance and exit a lot smoother than the in-game ones, so you're not going to be spiking your vertical Gs. So uh, just like the Zero G video, I'm going to be splitting this into two parts. We're going to have the inverted corkscrew first, and then we're going to have the sit down one following. So uh, I'm going to put on a time on screen now. Skip to this time if you just want to see the sit down corkscrew. But I do recommend you sit through the invert one as well, as uh, the invert one is very much similar to the sit down one. It's just a few differences in shaping and whatnot. So uh, yeah, uh, let's start with the inverted corkscrew. Okay, to begin the corkscrew, what we need to do is make sure that the entrance into it, just like the loop, is shallower and then gets tighter into the actual shape of the corkscrew. So, to begin the flat spin, uh, we're going to keep the banking offset to about minus one foot. We don't necessarily need too much banking offset for just now. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the track piece up, uh, add a tiny bit of banking, not too much, and a slight bit of yaw to it as well just for the lead into the corkscrew to make it a little bit smooth. So then we're going to increase it again, increase the yaw, sorry, the, the roll and the yaw as well. So we're going to start creating the shape of the corkscrew. And we're going to keep doing that, keep increasing the banking. So actually I can increase the turn a little bit more there. Uh, using this side, you want to make a circle shape because corkscrews need, uh, they look very circular from the side. From the top, they look more like a, just a kind of wave shape, like a sine wave. That's what I think that's what the No Limits 2 little help gives you on the screen as well. So uh, continue to uh, keep doing that. So we're going to increase the turn more, increase the banking more. And we're going to start pulling this up a little bit, uh, a little bit more, sorry. So as we create the circular shape. Um, the way the B&M shape their corkscrews is that they don't have a consistent roll that, you know, just gradually increases into the corkscrew. What they do is they have the banking accelerate through the middle of the corkscrew, which is what gives it the whip that, uh, you know, we all see on the inverts and sit down. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep the banking light around 90 to 100 degrees as we enter it. So let's do we need to start okay i'm going to start easing off the turning here i'm going to start pulling the banking down so i think we're going to go about 35 degrees place and here's where the whip begins we're going to pull this straight down start increasing our banking quite a lot so as you can see there and our turning needs to start flattening out even more so we're going to keep checking from this view Quite a tall corkscrew at the moment. So this middle point here, again, we're going to bring it down to about negative seven, and then cr then it really snapped the banking at this point. More than negative seven, really snapped the banking. Try and get it so that your middle of your whip is at 180 degrees. I think 180 is probably about about this point here. All right. Make sure that there's zero turning through the center where the whip's going to be. So uh, now that we've got that, we're going to place, keep moving that down, and now we're going to do the exact opposite of the entrance. We're going to start increasing the turn and start pulling this down. So if we keep checking from this view here, it's okay. From this view, it's a little bit less circular, uh, but that's all right. It need, it's a little bit more kind of, see like a teardrop shape for now, but that's fine. So now we're going to get the banking nice and... Start unbanking it, place that, unbank it again, come up from this view, pull it along, more turning, pull the bank down, unbank again, at this point we're going to start pulling it up, because this is the exit to our corkscrew, so exactly the same as what we did for our entrance, we're going to start unbanking it here, and then very nicely bring it to zero, bring that to about three, and then there. There we go. That's basically a very simplified flat spin corkscrew for a, uh, an invert. So now for the smoothing process, I'm going to bring this down. We're going to alter the whip slightly. We're just going to increase the banking that side because it was a little bit off center. 
you want your whip to be very centered so that it spins through the middle rather than you know i don't know like whipping whipping uh, i can't increase the banking there like on the center so now that we've done that uh okay we're gonna kind of <laughs> be a bit redundant now. i did that the wrong order we're gonna just simply take the entire corkscrew and we're gonna smooth it out using the smooth little tool as you can see there, it kind of looks more like the in-game one because the banking is constant rather than a whip. But if you have this kind of nice circular corkscrew shape, it should look like this from the top. So it shouldn't be a 90 degree kind of turn. It should be kind of more 75 degrees to that side. Uh, yeah, I think that looks about fine. So now all we're going to do is we're just going to readjust the banking. So again, at these first points, it's very unbanked. Here it's increasing in banking, but not too much. And then here we're going to add the whip. So we need to snap that and then just keep on banking this side. So it's about there. And then increase that. Pull that to about zero. And then let me just check that whip's in the crowd. Okay, that whip's a little bit off center. So we're going to increase that one there and then decrease that one here. There we go. Right, we have the uh, we have the whip for the corkscrew. I'd say ready to turn into uh, two meter pieces. Just keep adjusting these to make sure that we're going to get a nice realistic shape. What should happen is the corkscrew will whip through, and then it should slow down halfway through as it you know it gets ready to go into the pull out. Okay, so now that we've sorry, I'm just going to keep adjusting this to make it realistic. So it should look like this. Oh, it's very nice. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to turn it into uh, two meter pieces so we can get absolute smoothing ready for that. Okay, now that we've turned that into two meter pieces, you can already see there we've got a much better shape with a really intense whip through the center of the corkscrew. If you look at it from this angle, that's quite an intense whip. So all we're going to do now is quickly take the whole element and do the smooth all spamming a few times, but remember do that more than the uh, four meter ones because the two meter pieces move less and won't smooth as quickly. So if we just keep spamming this, you can already see there we've got the really nice shape to it, meaning that you've built that absolutely correctly if you've got this kind of O shape. All right, looking good, looking good. All right, now all we need to do is just readjust the banking as normal. And we should be absolutely good to go. Uh, using two meter pieces to get a corkscrew whip shape is absolutely perfect now. Back then, well, back then, <laughs> for the mod, I should say, um, the only way to get a real good corkscrew whip was to like auto complete and use bigger pieces and make the whip one big piece. And sometimes that would cause really rough transitions off the whip, which would, you know, cause vertical G4 spikes and then lateral G4 spikes. I think more. That wasn't really the most realistic way of doing it. Um, if you look at my Nemesis recreation now, uh, you can probably see the way I built the corkscrew using the longer pieces because when I built that, we didn't have the two meter mod. I have actually retracked Nemesis using the two meter mod. Uh, leave down in the comments if you want to see that, me up re upload the POV for that. I'd be more than happy to share that and show you kind of almost like a progress of you know where we've come from in Planet Coaster of four meter versus two meter. I've got some good shots, uh, I've posted them in some Discord servers, if... <laughs> and honestly it looks so much better than the original. It, it, there's such good shaping on it now, and the 2 meter method is oh, it's just the best thing ever. <laughs> Alright, um, I think now that our banking has been completely readjusted and shaped back to normal, we can start with the smoothing process. Now, the way you do the smoothing for corkscrews is you do start with the six pieces, but you only go back and forth. So you go forwards once and then backwards once because you don't, when you do the six pieces, it will get rid of the whip quite quickly. So we want to do this a very small amount of times so that we can keep the whip as realistic and, you know, snappy as possible to get the old school BNM look. If you do want a new gen BNM invert whip, or well, they have less, I should say. Um, you just smooth it out more times. And then that will get rid of the whip and keep it nice and smooth for you. 
So if I just keep doing this, we should be absolutely good to go. Okay, now that we've smoothed out using uh, six pieces, you can probably see there it's gotten rid of most of the whip. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quickly readjust some of these pieces over here to get the banking whip back to normal. You may be wondering why I'm readjusting the banking after we've just smoothed it. It's because when we go through with three pieces, that will work out the slight jolts and kinks of the top pieces. But the six uh, pieces has smoothed out the entrance and exit into the, the corkscrew, which is really, really important part to get smooth as you don't want jolts or snap on that part. You only want that on the whip. So if I just readjust these and then we're good to go. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna just take three pieces, go back and forth a few times and then I will use the little banking trick I showed in the Cobra Roll in Zero G tutorial um, to get the final result nice and perfectly smooth. For my smoothing uh, pattern, what I did is I went forwards, backwards and then forwards again which brought me to the end of the element where we can now start smoothing backwards halfway to do the slate banking trick which gives us just a little bit more consistency on the rolling and this is very noticeable on this and zero G rolls like I've shown as the exit is far far rougher than the entrance so we're going to go to about this piece here so in like the middle of the whip you can see the jolt and we're going to readjust it slightly if you just keep checking it make sure there's no big jolts in it that looks very smooth to me so uh, yeah, that looks like our corkscrew. Nice and done, finished, with the nice whip to it. You see on the B&M coasters. So I think we'll give this a quick test to uh, see what it's like. As you can see there, it's got the serious B&M whip at the top, like a classic invert should have. Uh, we'll do the guest facing cam, just to show you the whip with a little bit less smoothing on it, so it's what it's actually like. Very nice there, very strong whip. Um, you can, again, if you want to make a new gen, just keep smoothing it a few times so that the exit is a little bit smoother and the whip is a little bit less noticeable. I'd say that is a very good whip. It's very, uh, very intense at the top there. You can see there it rolls through. It has some good snap on the exit as well. And your exit has pretty, pretty low lats as well. So uh, yeah, that is the inverted uh, corkscrew, and now we will move on to the sit-down corkscrews. So the building of sit-down corkscrews is very similar to the building of inverted corkscrews, in the same sense that we start the pull-up, but the only difference is I'm using a much higher banking offset because we can get a much better shape with that. So again, we're going to start pulling into it. It's probably a little bit easier to build sit-down corkscrews because you have the uh, you can see the track if you're pulling too many too much bank, not too little. So again, we're just gonna ease into the pull-up, but we're gonna gradually increase the banking just like we did on the invert. So we're not gonna be pulling too many. Again, as we increase, just see that, just bring that over. Here's where we're gonna start implementing the downwards movement of the corkscrew. So we're gonna start plateauing it, make sure our banking's increased really start bringing it over bringing this down start leveling it out on the, uh, the yaw and then we're going to push it down to zero snap it to 180 degrees and keep the turn actually we can keep the turn quite high because it is a sit down you see there we've got the it's, it's a, another tall corkscrew so now that we've done that we just place that move that to the same degree about 15 Pull that down, pull that to there, and then you just start again with the unbanking process. Actually, because it is a sit down, it should have a little bit more lateral movement than an invert, so I think I'll bring that across slightly more. So we'll have the vertical movement be just a little bit more than the invert. So again, snap the whip to 180 degrees, bring it to zero, move that to nine again. There we go. We should have a little bit more of a circular shape on the uh, on the exit as well. A 
little bit too much on the vertical there. Again, gradually bring up the exit. Oh, camera controls just, you know, went funny on me then. Uh, we'll bring that down slightly there. You can always go back and edit that when we're redoing the banking. And then zero it out. All right, the exit's a little bit misshapen because I was having a little bit of trouble with that. I don't know why that was found so difficult to do. <laughs> uh, pull that down, pull that down, pull that down again a bit more. Bring it across, move it over a little bit. You can see there we've got the nice shaping going on with the, uh, the top of the loop there. There's a big corkscrew. This would be like uh, how I'm cracking it has just the one corkscrew at the end. It'd be more like that. All right, now that we've got that, we're just going to take the whole corkscrew and spam smooth it. That has pushed it down at the center, which is good. And already you can see there, we've got the really nice, perfectly, well, not perfectly circular. The exit should slightly skew it as the forces need to be slightly less on the exit than they do throughout the entire corkscrew. Now that we've got the nice shape, we're just going to go back and readjust the banking. Actually increase it. A bit too much there. Uh, Ginny readjust it. And then I'll... The the way you build the snap on the uh, sit-downs, it's a little bit more difficult because it's a little bit harder to see on these. But because we should have had this at 180, because it's at zero, you know there's your midpoint. So if you make this like 120 and then snap to 180, it should mean that when you smooth it out, you'll get a nice clear whip through the exit. Again, keep bringing that down. We'll make sure our exit is nice and smooth. Like that. And then you can see that it's it's probably the best to look at it from this view. If I just to hit the smooth all a few times there. We can already see there, it's got the whip. A very clear snap through the center there. So the next step is to turn it into two meter pieces. Okay, so now that we've turned these all into uh, two meter pieces, all we need to do is just like normal, take the whole element and then use the spam smooth, 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 smooth to get it nice and smooth. Two meter pieces, of course, need longer because they move less than four meter pieces. All right, now that we've done that, we just need to go back and readjust the banking. This means that we're not going to exert any unnecessary lateral g-force on our riders. And as well, that means that we can craft the really smooth and intense b and whip that this corkscrew should be having. When I've finished this, we will start the six-piece smoothing as well, which means that we can then uh, get the entire banking of the uh, corkscrew nice and smooth. <laughs> And then uh, use the three piece to get the whip perfect and use the little uh, banking trick I showed you in the Zero G roll and the Cobra roll tutorial. So if I just keep adjusting this, getting it nice and smooth. Um, is that too little? I think that might be a little bit too little banking on the exit. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to exaggerate the banking of the whip just so that when we use the six piece, it isn't going to be, you know, too gentle on the whip because flawless coasters do tend to have quite a lot of whip through the uh, corkscrews in them. So we'll start with six piece smoothing and we'll make sure that's nice and smooth. Okay, so what I did there was I smoothed forwards once and then backwards once to get the radius of the loop nice and loop. I keep calling it a loop, a radius of the corkscrew nice and smooth. Uh, I am now just going to readjust and add some more width to it because I do think the six piece did get rid of that. So all we need to do is make sure that's 180. Snap that. Snap that. I think I'll put it about 125. Go 125, I think. And then we'll just readjust all this to get it 
pretty accurate to where it was. Actually, 125 is a bit steep. We'll go 130 instead. Oh, no, that one needs to be 130, sorry. Um. Yeah, well, actually, 135. 135 should work. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to use three-piece selection and smooth it back and forth a few times. Okay, so the smoothing pattern that I did there was I went forwards, backwards, forwards, and then backwards and forwards. So I actually smoothed it five times over because I noticed that the whip at the top was a little bit too harsh. So all we need to do now is start smoothing from the back to do the little technique to get the banking perfectly smooth. So if we just keep moving it backwards, all the way back up to, all the way up to here. We're gonna go one over the center one here. We're gonna smooth once, find the kink in the middle. It's a little bit more difficult to see because the track is um, sit down and it's on a curved surface with banking. So we're gonna find the kink, slightly readjust it. And then we should have this perfectly smooth circular shape created by the rails, meaning that the roll on the corkscrew should be nice and smooth now. So uh, that looks like our corkscrew pretty much finished. You can see there it's got the nice whip shaping to it. It's pretty nice circular shaping too. The forces, the shaping into the corkscrew is a lot more gentle than the in-game one. And it looks pretty much like a B&M corkscrew to me. So uh, yeah, I think we'll give this a quick test and see what it's like. As you can see there, we've got a little bit of a whip there through the corkscrew. You know, not too much so that the riders aren't going to experience, you know, a sudden jolt to the left as they're going through it. If we check from a uh, guest facing cam, you can see there that the train really smoothly whips into the corkscrew there. Looking absolutely beautiful there. So, uh, yep, yeah, that is how you make a sit down corkscrew in Planet Coaster using the 2 meter method. Honestly, this method is so much better than using the in game ones because the in game ones have absolutely no whip at all. The lead in is super intense for the riders and it's just not very versatile. You can't do smooth transitions in and out. So, it's much better to try and build your own and using these kind of methods. So, uh, Thank you very much for watching, and I just want to say thank you so much for the support recently on the channel. We did just hit 100 subscribers, so thank you so, so much for all the support, and I do hope you'll stick around for some more tutorials that I'll have coming out that aren't just elements. I'm going to be looking at doing some other Planet Coaster tutorials for anyone that uh, you know might want to see things. Please, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments, and then I will absolutely uh, get around to doing them eventually. So uh, again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all next time.